of you those 26 problems to practice drawing the pictures, yeah. right? Um, please make sure you guys work on that. I know it's difficult to like read and understand the problem, um, but that's, you know, it's very, very important for you guys to be able to take something from words and be able to draw it as a figure that therefore you can now create an equation and go ahead and solve. Um, so this one says a cruise ship travels at a bearing of 40 degrees at 20 miles per hour. So again, we have a bearing. So immediately, once I see that I have a bearing, I'm just going to put a little dot and say, all right, it's a cruise ship. I don't know. It's leaving from port or it's in the open sea. But I'm going to draw my compass heading. So north, east, south, west. Now in this case, unlike the last problem, it doesn't tell you like start due north or start due west and where to rotate. It just gives you an angle. So remember, bearings start at due north, rotate clockwise. So I'm going to have something like this. Actually, let me do everything a little bit lower. So that is what, 40 degrees. OK, cool. Um, then it says it's going to change course. Now, obviously, we know they don't turn on a dime, but let's play with me here. So, but we have a new bearing. So again, whenever you have a bearing, you create a compass heading. North, east, south, west. Now again, you need to turn 120 degrees. So again, you start due north. Well, from here to here is 90. From here to here is 180. So 120 is just going to be 30 degrees more than 90, right? Let me somewhere right around there. Let's just save right there. Does that kind of make sense to think about like the path here? We have 40 degrees, and then that's 120. And then they're saying find the distance and the bearing from its original position. So therefore, we need to figure out D, which we're going to say the distance. from the original position. And then we need to figure out the bearing. Now again, remember the bearing's from due north. So it's not 40 degrees, right? It's going to be from here to here, right? So it's really going to be this angle. Let's just call this A. It's really going to be A plus 40. So we've got to figure out A. So we have two things we need to figure out. We need to figure out the length, and we need to figure out the angle. Now, if I look at. First of all, though, I've got to figure out the magnitude, because I just drew these because I already did this problem. But in reality, we don't really know how long these side lengths are, do we? Right? So some, we might need to extend it or shorten them based on those values. So let's go back to the word problem and say, how long are these? Well, the first one is 20 miles per hour for three hours. So we'll call this 60. And again, guys, it doesn't have to be like, exact. But obviously, if the next side length is larger, like you should try to make that you know, as um, as scalable as possible. So that's going to be 60, what is that, miles? Yeah, miles. All right, and the next one, you travel 25 miles per hour for two hours, so that's going to be 50. OK, so roughly mine's looking OK, right? So we have 60 and then 25 miles per hour for two hours, that's going to be 50 miles. So now I have a side length and a side length, but I don't have any angles. So now we need to use our geometry to figure something out. I have 40 and I have 120. Well. If this is 120, then I know that this angle has to be 60, because 60 and 120 are supplementary angles, right? They create. That's the nice thing about the compass settings, guys. You know, it's the xy axis. Everything's 90 degrees. So you can use that idea of complementary and supplementary angles to find a missing measure. The other nice thing is when you have more than one compass setting, what do you have? P -p 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 -par Parallel. Parallel lines and a transversal. And when we recognize when we have two angles that are on alternating sides of a transversal, a line that intersects parallel lines, we know that those are alternate interior angles. So that's going to be 40 degrees. Now, do we know the angle right there? 100 degrees. So now I have side, angle, side, and now I can apply the law of cosines. So again, I'm going to solve for D, because again, for a side, in this case, when you have side, angle, side, I can find my missing D. So D is going to represent, um, let's see, 60 squared plus 50 squared. Sorry, that's D squared. Minus 2 times 60 times 50 times the cosine of 100 degrees. And that's based on the formula for the law of cosines, which you know we don't have anything in from there. So let's go ahead and, or we don't have A, B, and C. So I'm just going to type in those side lengths. Because you only have two side lengths, right? And you have your included angle. 
So now we don't need to worry about order of operations. We can just type this all in together. 60 squared plus 50 squared minus 2 times 60 times 50 times cosine of 100. And we get 7,141. Are we good? Oh, yeah, you're right. We got to do miles. Now, does that make sense, guys? You travel 60 miles, you travel 50 miles, now you're 7,000 miles away, right? So slow down. Does your question, if you guys remember when we first did word problems, does your question make sense? No. So then we go back to it, we say, oh, that's right. d squared is equal to that. So I got to square root it. And remember, use the last answer. And I'm going to get 84.51 miles. Right? OK. So but that doesn't answer our question, guys. That only answers part of our question. That just gives us a distance. We still need to figure out the bearing. Well, at least now we have all three sides, so that's good. So now we can find our missing angle, right? Because remember, to use the law of cosines to find a missing angle, you have to have all three sides. However, so that means we have to use this as a calculation. So does that mean I should use 84.51, or should I use 84.50969806? That one. Rather than typing that in, let's store that. So since I have D on my storing, I'll use D. If you don't have D, use A or B or C. It doesn't really matter. Well, probably not A or B because you're already going to use A or B. Maybe X or Y or something. All right, so now let's go ahead and figure out A. So I could say cosine of A equals <coughs> cosine of A equals. All right, so it's going to be 60 squared plus 50. Jeez, no, I'm sorry. 60 squared plus 50 squared minus stored D all over 2 times 60 times 50. And again, I'm just rewriting the formula. I'm noticing that this is my angle. Oh, I'm um, idiot. Wait a minute. Sorry about that. That's wrong. If this is my angle, then it should be 60 squared plus d squared, right? Minus 50 squared. Right? Can somebody confirm? Isn't this angle supposed to be the same as that side length on the formula sheet? I mean, you guys will have it on your test. Yeah. Now, again, remember, order of operations matters here, right? Because we're dividing. So when you type this in, make sure you use parentheses. OK? So let's do parentheses here. And I'll do 60 squared plus alpha d squared minus 50 squared, close parentheses, divided by open parentheses, 2 times 60 times alpha d. And I get 0.81271629722. Does that make sense for my angle? No, because that's the cosine of my angle, right? So when I wake up, I just do A equals the cosine inverse of that last answer. So I just do cosine inverse of the last answer. And I get 35.6. So is that my bearing? Yeah, remember, guys, read the question. A equals 36 degrees. You can round to the nearest hole. But that's not the bearing. That's A. That's here. That's not the bearing. That's the angle inside of the triangle. The bearing is from due north. From here to here is 40 degrees. From here to here is 36. So it has a bearing of 76 degrees. Make sense? I mean, it's a great problem to see on a test or quiz. I can test your bearings. I can test your distance. Right? Wow, what an amazing problem to just copy and paste onto your quiz. Wow. And then when you